The last thing we need to be able to do in our truth trees and predicate logic is deal with the identity operator. So for example, let's say we have the following four well-formed formulas. So we have for all x, if px, then qx. We have pc, so technically this should give us qc after changing the x to c. We have not qd, so assume this is another assumption that we're given. And then we're told that we have c is equal to d. So what this means is that we should be able to say that d and c are the same thing, so we should be able to get not qc from this. And at this point, it should give us a contradiction because we have qc and not qc. Because essentially qc and qd are the same thing, so we can't have both at the same time. So how do we do this in our truth trees? How can we make a tree where this ends up being closed because we have a contradiction? Okay. Well, we'll use identity elimination as a new rule. And here's how the rule works. Let's say we have some uh, well-formed formula in line i. On line j, we're told that, uh, let's say, some term is equivalent to another term. Then in line k, what we're going to get is the predicate where t1 replaces t2, or so two outcomes for this rule, we have a predicate where t2 replaces t1. And then we'd say from i and j, we have done uh, the identity elimination. So to demonstrate this rule, uh, basically if we have, let's say, if we had before qc, we have c equals d, then we can get qd out of it by replacing c with d. So if we find, for example, in the thing before, qd and not qd, we would be able to close this. However, if at any point we were to say have a equals b, b equals c, and c is equal to a, but this is not true, so not c equals a, if we follow the equivalence, eventually we'd get uh, a equals c, and then we could replace uh, a with not c, so we'd get not c is equal to c, and of course uh, we have another contradiction here, because we cannot have c is equivalent to not c. That'd be the same thing as saying like p is equivalent to not p in terms of propositional logic. So if we ever see this formation, we can also close a branch because we consider it to be a contradiction. Okay, so two ways we can find contradictions with the identity operator is either by finding a traditional contradiction or by finding a contradiction within the identity operator itself. So let's put these into action with three example problems. So the first one is about well-formed formula consistency. So I've already written out the first three lines. We have for all x, px, x. There exists an x, exists a y, such that not px, y. And for all x, x is equal to a. So we follow the same strategies as before. So first, we're going to pick a variable for the x. There exists an x, exists a y. So we'll do existential elimination in line four. So a hasn't been used yet, so let's use a. So we're going to get exists a y, uh, not p, x is going to be replaced with a, so not p, a, y. Uh, this comes from line two, and this is uh, existential elimination. Okay, what about in line five? Well, we're going to do it again with the y, so let's use b. Again, we have to use a new opera, a new constant that we haven't seen before. So not PAB, this is for existential elimination. Now, we have not PAB. And we have for all x, PXX, and for all x, x is equal to A. So if I just do one right now, let's just do one so we can see what we're trying to get. So let's say I have PAA here. And this is one universal elimination. So now what I want to do is I want to somehow use the rule for all x, x is equal to a in order to get a contradiction here. So I want to try to get this b to become an a. 
that would be the ideal strategy because then I get PAA and not PAA and then we get our contradiction. So in line seven, I'm gonna take three, and I'm going to substitute B in with A because again, this is a universal we can use constants we've already used. So this is just three universal elimination. Now we know that B and A are the same thing. So we can use our well-formed formula in line five, not PAB, and we can replace B with A to get not PAA. So from five and from seven, we have used identity elimination here. So now we have a contradiction because we have PAA and we have not PAA. So now that we've added the identity operator, the proofs are actually a lot more complicated in terms of what you need to be searching for, what you need to try to do. It's not as straightforward now as just uh, eliminating everything, doing existentials first and universals later, and then uh, maybe strategically picking one constant to change. Uh, we have to think a little bit ahead and keep in our heads that, you know, A is equal to B. Like this is what we want in order to get an equivalent. Uh, so we have to sort of work, construct that. So let's do another one. Determine whether the following well-formed formula is a tautology. And here we're just using identities. So we can see that second rule for closed branches in action. So for all x, for all y, if x is equal to y, then y is equal to x. Now for tautology, again, we have to negate it. We have to say, well, what if it is false? Can it be false? So this is why we have the negation out front. And now let's just work with it. So I'm going to abbreviate a couple things here because what we're going to have to do first with line one is do not for all decomposition. So basically, this becomes exists in X, and then everything inside is negated. So I'm just going to abbreviate that because it's not really important for us to write that down. Now we have the X exists in X, and inside is for all Y, X is equal to Y, then Y is equal to X. We have to pick a variable that hasn't been used before, a constant. So let's do A. So every time there is X, in the initial statement, I'm going to replace it with A. So if A is equal to Y, then Y is equal to A. So this is from two, and this is existential elimination. In line four, we're going to do the same thing as line one. So this becomes exists a Y, not, and I'll write this out this time. If A is equal to Y, then Y is equal to A. So from three, this is not for all decomposition. And in four, we have exists a y something, so we're gonna replace y with a new constant. Let's pick b. Okay, so now we have not. If a is equal to b, then b is equal to a. Okay, that's done, that's from four. Again, existential elimination. Now we can finally do something interesting. So we have not, and then stuff inside the brackets with an arrow. So we're going to do not arrow elimination from line five. And this means that we take the first as being true. So the antecedent is true, and then the consequent is false. So not B is equal to A. And this is the same thing in both lines. Okay, now, this might not appear as if we have a contradiction at first, so let's manipulate this a little bit. Remember, if we have the form not t is equal to t, that means we have a contradiction. So, a is equal to b. This means that we can replace this a with a b. So let's do that. In line a, we get not b, a becomes b, so not b is equal to b. Again, we can say from six and seven, this is, identity elimination. Now we have this form, not t is equal to t, so we have a contradiction, this branch closes. So yes, we can claim that we have a tautology. Okay, so we have now two examples. We have one example with the identity contradiction, and we have one example with a contradiction from taking two well-formed formulas where one is normal and the other one is negated. 
So now, let's take a look at a valid argument question. And who knows what we're going to get in terms of our contradiction, or if we're even going to get one. So, when we determine an argument is valid, again, we assume the premises are true and that the consequent is false here. So, we put a negation for not HII because this is what we're trying to prove. So, for all Z, if GZ, then for all Y, if KY, then HZY. We're given KI and GJ and I is equal to J, and we want to show not HII. So, in line four, I'm just going to do some of the boring stuff here and separate all of these ands. So from two, we're doing and elimination. I'm not really going to write the rest of these out uh, because it's just repeating a lot of things. So we get I equals J, that separates, uh, KI separates, and GJ separates. So at the very least, we can take this off, take this off, and we've dealt with these. We've separated all of our ands. Okay. So my conclusion is not HII. So in my head, what I'm thinking right now is I want to get HII. Or maybe I want to change the I's to J's because I have the fact that I is equal to J. So even HJJ would be fine for me. Either of these would be fine because I know they're equivalent. Um, in fact, I could even do something like H I, J, and that would be fine. Any sort of combinations of I's and J's we can get because we know they're the same. So uh, what I have to deal with, or what I have to use also, is G, J, and K, I. But for the sake of simplicity, so it doesn't really matter which one I have, let's say that we have K, J. So what I'm doing here is I'm using five and six, and I'm using the fact that i is equal to j to change ki to kj, and from gj, I can also go to gi. So from seven and five, I'm also using identity elimination to get gi. Now I don't have to do this now, but because I've done this, it doesn't matter if I have ki or kj or gj or gi, um, they're all the same. So now this means that when I take a look at line one, for all z, if g, z, then for all y, if k, y, then h, z, y, it doesn't really matter if I pick i or j for any of these. So let's do, from line one, universal elimination, and let's change the z's to i's. Why not? So if g, i, then for all y, if k, y, then h, i, y. Okay. There's one. Now, because we have a arrow here, we're going to get split into two branches. Either it's going to be not GI, or we're going to get for all Y, if KY, then HIY. So this is from 10, and this is just elimination of the arrow. Now, I can close the left branch, and I can close the left branch because we did conversion. We know that i is equal to j. We had gj, so that means we have gi now, and this branch has not gi. So we get a contradiction here. If we didn't do the exchange earlier of i and j, we could have done it on this branch. Okay, so that closes. Now we don't have to worry about that side, which is great. So for all y, K, Y, arrow, H, I, Y. Um, we want to get H, I, I, right? So let's just change the Y to an I as well. So we're going to get K, I, arrow, H, I, I. So from 11, this is universal elimination. If I use K, J, sure, that would work too. We know I is equal to J, so we could just switch some stuff around. But I can very clearly see I want H, I, I, so let's not just try to get it. So now, using arrow decomposition, we're going to get either not ki or hii. So that's in line 13. So from 12, we have arrow elimination as well. And now this is nice, because we have not ki, and we have ki. That was a given. So we get a contradiction there, and we have not hii from our assumptions, 
we have HII here, so this closes. Now all of the branches have closed. Therefore, when we go back to our original question, is the argument valid? We can say, yes, it is, because all of our branches close. So this is how we use the identity operator in truth trees. If you have any questions, leave them down below and hopefully me or someone else is able to answer your question.